So Elaine's starting class is Lord, and Lord is a good all-around bruiser class. He has the growth types all around her, which means his growths are going to be pretty balanced, uh, pretty evenly distributed, so he won't really specialize in anything, which is good because this class is a kind of generous class that can kind of dip into other things. Uh, so the class has blocking, good durability, and virtually no weaknesses. So most classes have an explicit weakness. This is one of the few classes in the game that, that does not. So having him as your main tank can be quite valuable, especially if you dump Vitality dues into him so he gets extra HP. Now, the class itself is a sword, shield, infantry. So any sword weapons or weapons he can use. So if we go to loadouts, I have him on runic swords so that right now he can kill armors. And you can also put him on Viper Fang so that he can poison armors. He can run Templar Sword, which you get from Joseph for just good damage. And of course, there's also the Sanguine Blade, which can heal for 50% of the damage dealt using its special attack. Now, that weapon also has high might. So in most cases, it could be better for more consistent healing over Lean Edge. I need to test it still, but it seems like that is the case because Lean Edge just does... 25% of life steal is like damage dealt and then 25% more if you kill. So he has access to some pretty good early weapons that allow him to target specific things. And he also is a shield unit. So you can immediately give him Joseph shield if you want to get your guard rate up and your guard efficiency. It also gives an HP recovery so that you can stack his heal and heals applied to him so that he basically has better uh, durability and better self heal and applied heals. So aside from this, what else does he do? If he is your leader, you gain more valor points when defeating enemy units, which allows you to use more valor abilities. This is hugely useful for winning maps, deploying more units, using valor abilities, and so on. And for his skills, uh, his first skill, Lean Edge, attack a single enemy. It has 100 physical potency, 100% hit rate. Uh, now, this still can miss, obviously, if an enemy's high avoid, for example. Uh, so attack a single enemy, recover 25% if it hits, and 25% more if they're defeated. So in some cases, it is best for him to last hit, or in other words, change this so it prioritizes uh, lowest HP, which is what I have it on right now. So it's really good for him to last hit to get that super heal. At level 10, he unlocks Cavalry Slayer, which is pretty insane, actually, and it's really good against, like, horse bosses. So it inflicts AP, PP, minus one, and guard seal, which I'm pretty sure prevents them uh, from guarding if they're a cav, and it also has 100 physical potency. Now that matters because some abilities actually have less damage. They'll have like 80 or 60% physical potency, which means that the damage is reduced. So in the case of most multi-hit attacks, they have like 80, so it's like less damage. Uh, he has noble guard, activates before being hit by physical attack, blocks enemy attack with medium guard. So from what I understand, medium guard, I think is just like a moderate amount of damage reduction. I don't know the exact number, but the damage reduction seems quite steep. Uh, grants the user plus 20 defense, grants the user plus one passive points if the user is 50% HP or less. So if you can proc this at 50% HP or less, you get a passive point for free, which is quite nice. And then luminous cover, activates before an ally is attacked cover an ally with a medium guard that grants that ally 20 percent. so he can block for himself and he can block for allies and if he is low hp when he blocks for himself he resets his own passive points and then he can also luminous cover an ally afterwards and then also with this with the runic blade he gains magic attack which is something that anyone gets using the runic blade 150 magic potency, attack a single enemy. This is really good at just like killing an armor. This is one of the things he struggles with because he has no way of dealing with armors. But once you get Cavalry Slayer, you can deal with armors with the Runic Blade. You can deal with calves with this. And at any point in time, if you go to your loadout, you can actually switch weapons that are not equipped. So if you have other utility weapons, you can just equip them. But you cannot take someone else's weapon. So something very useful. So if you do, if you want to switch off Runic Blade, you can have him rotate between two swords, which is pretty crazy. Uh, now in terms of initiative, it's pretty decent. Oh, let me make sure. Oh yeah. Let's go over his Valor, valor skills before we move on to the next section. All right, Valor skills. He has two starting out. Uh, valorious Order. Uh, I think I said that right. <laughs> valorious Order. 
Uh, increases damage dealt by 20%, reduces damage taken by 20%, grants first strike to all eyes within range. So it has a pretty big range. You can use this on a big group of your units before you attack bosses, take forts, and just fight in general. And it is very useful for pushing final maps because it just tips the damage reduction and the damage dealt in your favor for you know as many units are affected for one combat and the first strike is helpful too because in some cases you can kill like difficult to kill enemies or annoying enemies that are troublesome before they can counter attack you so this just gives you a huge edge when pushing and then his second valor skill is not nearly as good royal order increases xp gained by an allied units by 100 percent. so this is just one allied unit as far as i know uh, let's see uh, actually, i actually can't check it right now i can check it after this battle here let's do this Let's, let's show him in a fight. So I'm going to do this because all their damage is coming from those assists. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> all the damage is coming from those archers assists. So let's check him out on Runic Blade. Let's get a feel for what he can do. The magic attack just one-shots the guy. This is on expert mode. Long thrust. True thrust. Kills the archer. Yeah, leaving them just with one tank. He dodges. He would have used his shield anyways, then we heal. So this team comp is actually really good for him. Uh, Clive has huge physical damage, can kill a bunch of things, can true thrust thieves with the... Uh, what is it? The Accurate Spear? Let me, let me get you the actual name of that. The exact name of that. This is a really good setup. Yeah, Unwavering Spear, sorry. Yeah, and then you can switch between true thrust and assaulting advance and he can it's assaulting advance open teams he can true thrust uh through defenders he can true thrust like thieves and griffins and things like this to accurately hit them and then elaine can switch to the magic attack on runic sword and kill armors so the, between the two of them they can kill pretty much most things and then chloe has basically no weaknesses i have her on golden eggs this is my main combat group so that we get money while doing this uh, while fighting, she typically targets columns, and then you can switch her off columns if, uh, you know, they don't have a column. So that's usually a good idea. I don't know if this is an and or an or gate. I need to figure that out. But, uh, all right, so what else do we know? Should we know about him? I'm just checking my notes. Valor, Valorius, Royal Guard increases XP. Yeah, I think that's everything. He's basically just, like, one of the best units in the game, honestly. And this particular team comp with weapon rotation is quite good. And you can switch his position. I actually changed his position so that he would attack the thing in front of him. So if you don't have specific attacking orders, they'll just attack what's in front of them. Uh, so in the case of that combat, he attacked the guy. He attacked their party leader because he was right in front of him. Now, the reason why I wanted to do that was so that I could kill that guy and then have the other dudes get hit with column attacks specifically. So I could kill the archer too. So there's some pretty interesting tactics just by changing up positions and by like assigning like specific attack orders and so on. Uh, but outside of that, you definitely want to be running this dude. Now, in terms of running him on the back rank, you can do that, and it's not bad. I feel like he's best on the front rank right now, at least as far as I can tell. There might be some weird back rank things for him, maybe if you like run redundant tanks or something, but he's such a good tank, it's hard to not run him on the front. He has no weaknesses, it's easy to keep him alive. As long as you don't attack into some crazy damage comp, he should be fine. And as long as you set his rules so that he can self-heal, at least situationally. So like right now, a second, let me check on the tactics. Right now, if we go to unit overview. Oh, can I not change tactics in there? Let's see. Yeah, I guess you can't change tactics until you're in combat. All right, let's get in combat again. Where should I go next? So now we're actually going to get hit by these AoEs. <laughs> Alright, so here's what we want to do. We want to organize. Or no, he should attack. He should be fine. Yeah, there's only one target. He should attack it. We're basically just going to eat the assist attacks. I'm being pretty aggressive on this map, so I'm fine with it. But we're going to eat these assist attacks. And he can guard those, as can uh, Clive. There's quite a lot of them. They killed Chloe. Then he magic attacks that, kills it. Yeah, you really should take out guard towers before pushing things like this, but for the sake of this, I just want to show like what he can tank, what he can do. Uh, now, in this case, Chloe died from three <laughs> ranged attacks, <laughs> which will happen. She can be susceptible to things like that, but 
outside of that, she should really almost never be dying. But yeah, that's it for this one. Definitely like and subscribe if you enjoyed this. I'll be going over each unit type uh, for as long as I can in the demo because I'm just playing this from the beginning. So I'm be, you'll, you'll be seeing a lot of the same maps over and over again because I have to restart from the beginning. Uh, but yeah, thanks for checking this out. That's it for this one. Peace.